This is a tour of Cedar Point in 2021. We are starting at the main gate of four. There's the Windseeker Gate, the Resort Gate, and the Marina Gate. We are starting at the main gate. There are going to be voiceovers over, and we are not going to be cutting. If we do cut, we are starting in the exact same location we left off. So to the left here, you can see the first of many Coca-Cola refresh stands, where you can also buy Fastlane. And to the right, you can see th one of three carousels in the park, which is this carousel is known as the Midway Carousel. To the left here is French Quarter Confections, which is a newer store that sells waffles, donuts, and other treats. Also on the left is the Jack Aldrich Theater, which sometimes has announcements for rides including Valraven and some Snoopy shows. You also have a photo booth on the right to get fun pics. On the right here, inside the station for Skyride, which takes you down the main midway, is the CP Shop, which sells Skyride merchandise. Here on the left is one of my favorite restaurants in the park, which is Hugo's Italian. It opened in 2019 and sells all kind of different Italian foods. We are not heading down this small path, but down there is the exit and fast lane to the first coaster you see, Raptor. Also down that section is the Raptor photos and restroom. Speaking of Raptor, right under the first drop of the B&M Invert, which opened here in 1994, is the entrance, which got a revamp in 2020. There's also a few shops coming up on the left, including a Dip and Dots stand, which are littered everywhere throughout the park. To the left here is another Coca-Cola Freestyle. You will see these everywhere throughout the park and also Cedar Point's Fresh Cut Fries. These are also throughout the park, but they have a great dipping sauce, which is the Parmesan Garlic Sauce, which I highly recommend getting if you ever get the Cedar Point Fries. This giant portion of bricks is actually bricks that you could have bought last year in 2020. My family bought a brick, and our names are on that brick somewhere. We will go straight later on in the video, but we are actually turning to the left to go to the Marina Midway. Tricky and Pete's is a sit-down restaurant, which is one of the few in the park, and they're everywhere throughout Cedar Fair Parks. I believe there is one at basically every Cedar Fair Park, maybe with a few exceptions. On the right is another basketball game. You'll see these everywhere throughout the park. And we are coming up to our second coaster, which is actually the oldest coaster in the park. It was built in 1964. It is Blue Streak. Blue Streak is renamed Boo Streak during Hollow Weekends. That big sign you see for Blue Streak is actually the exit of the coaster. The entrance is down to the left, down this narrow alley, and that's also where the fast lane entrance is. We are now approaching our second thrill coaster, Val Raven, which opened here in 2016 as the world's tallest, longest, and fastest B&M dive coaster. The gift shop is here on the left, and that's also where the exit and lockers are. Right here is the fast lane and normal entrance to Val Raven. There used to be a throne coming up, but it was removed for the 2021 season. Right here on the left is another entrance to the park. This is the marina gate, and it actually crosses the road into the marina where there are a few restaurants and the boat docks. We are currently right underneath the drop of Val Raven. You may notice how there is a split path coming up. If you go to the right, that leads to that other section by Raptor that we skipped out on earlier. Again, we will get back to that later in the video, and we will also hit the other side. Right here is the back station of Skyride, which we saw earlier. There is a custard restaurant on the side where you can buy ice cream and custard. On opposite sides of the midway are two restaurants. The one on the left is the Val Raven Dive-In, which has hot dogs and bratwurst, 
and to the right is a typical diner called the Coasters Drive-In. We are now coming off the main midway section of the park and entering Millennia Midway, which is standing tall in the horizon. This stage is the main stage in the park and holds a ton of shows. This stage used to host Luminosity, which was cancelled in 2019 to make way for the Cedar Point Spectacular. To the left are the grandstands to watch the show. Those grandstands are in the spot Wildcat used to be in. Coming up, you can see the first of two railroad stations. This is the Lake Erie Railroad Station. The one in the back of the park is the Cedar Point section. This train will take you all the way to the very back of the park. Also, in this section is another restroom for the Millennium Midway. Coming up to the right, you can see two coasters in a restaurant. The first coaster you come across here is the family coaster, Iron Dragon, which opened in 1987. It's a family suspended coaster. Right past another dip and Dot stands is the Dragon's Inn, which I believe is the only restaurant in the park that actually sells cheese sticks if you're not in a sit-down diner. To the left across the tracks is the rest of the park. Straight ahead is the entrance to Rougarou, which is actually a dead end. Rougarou originally opened as Mantis, a stand-up coaster. It was transformed to a floorless coaster in 2015. The only thing down in this section is the lockers, exit, photos, fast lane, and normal entrance to this floorless coaster. Across the train tracks leads to an age and weight guessing game, and the star of this section, Millennium Force. This is where the fast lane and normal entrance are. The exit's coming up past the lockers. This was the first Giga Coaster opening in 2000. To the right are two challenging games, which are a typical ladder climb and basketball challenge. To the left are the lockers and photos to Millennium Force. The photos are also where the exit to the ride is. To the left is Panda Express, a typical Chinese restaurant, which you can find around other Cedar Fair parks. To the right is a photo shop and the Red Garter Saloon. The Red Garter Saloon is mainly a show venue, but also has some food options. Also here is a small antique shop and the restrooms. We are also now entering the Frontier Trail section of the park, which is a more wooded area with not as many rides. To the left is a sweet shop, a coffee shop, and a pretzel shop. To the right is another Dippin' Dot stand and another Coca-Cola freestyle. This tunnel goes directly under Millennium Force, so it gets very loud when you're in the tunnel and Millennium Force goes flying at 80 miles per hour over it. To the left is a porta potty, which when you pull the handle, it has a special phrase that a guy inside says. To the left is also a trail tavern, and to the right is pony rides. To the right is Fort Sandusky and a sign maker. To the left is a bunch of smaller buildings, including a jail, cabin, and wood shop. On opposite side of the midway here is the candy shop and candle shop. To the right is a typical ripcord attraction called Professor Dilbert's Frontier Fling. Down this small midway is Forbidden Frontier, which is a small walkthrough area with no rides, but instead good food with the options, live actors, and much more. Over to the left now is Millennium Force's Overbank and the Barnyard, which is open every day from noon to six. To the right is a refresh station and the Barnyard restroom.
This is the lookout area for the Intamin River Raft Ride Thunder Canyon. The entrance is just down there. To the right here is a sawmill and also a vegan restaurant called the Wild Turnip. Family dryers where you can dry off from the two water rides, another we'll get to later, are located right across from the Thunder Canyon dry goods and glass blowing. This is right beside the entrance to Frontier Town. Right next to the Frontier Town Bridge is the Snake River Falls exit ramp. The entrance is later on, but this is the drop where you can watch everyone get soaked. To the left is the iconic turnaround on Maverick, the Intamin launch coaster which opened in 2007. We'll get to the entrance to that ride later as well. We are now next to another frozen custard stand and the Wagon Wheel Pizza, which sells pizza and buffalo wings. We are going left at the split path. We will go to the right past the Wagon Wheel Pizza later. To the left here is Wave Swinger, which is a typical Wave Swinger flat ride. Up ahead is Chick-fil-A, which is everyone's favorite restaurant, which is, to be honest, pretty overrated. This here is the exit pictures and shop for Maverick, which is the Intamin launch coaster. This is the fast lane for Maverick, which is separated from the actual entrance to the ride. This is the entrance to Maverick. Up ahead is an, another station to the Cedar Point and Lake Erie Railroad, this time taking you through the park up to the Millennium Force Station we saw earlier. Also here is Sagebrush Sue's, which is another restaurant that you can eat at. Right here is another Coca-Cola refresh station, which is right next to the Steel Vengeance gift shop. These two stores you can walk through and get to the other side of this midway, next to the train station. Right across the train tracks is the entrance to Steel Vengeance, everyone's favorite roller coaster. The RMC Hyper Hybrid, which opened at Cedar Point in 2018. Down this little dead end is the exit to the ride. Coming up is going to be one of the rare occasions in the video where we actually cut to a different section. This is to show every part of the park because there are a few split paths. This area is down the tracks back towards Maverick in Middle Frontier Town. We just cut to a different section of the park. This section is right past the wagon wheel pizza that we saw earlier back by Waveswinger. So we are now next to the big white building which is the town hall which is still closed for a renovation. It's been closed for a while. Coming up is the entrance to two flat rides. The first, which you can see right there, is Skyhawk, which is an SNS scream and swing. To the right is the entrance to Snake River Falls, which is that other water ride we saw earlier. Right here is another locker system, the exit to the next coaster coming up, Cedar Creek Mine Ride and the restrooms is in this big yellow building, which actually used to be the original Skyride station. Past the gazebo is the entrance to the other antique cars ride called Antique Autos. This here is the entrance to the mine train coaster in the park known as Cedar Creek Mine Ride. It opened here in 1969. This area is also where you can feed the carp in the river. Coming up is the second out of four cuts in the, this video. This cut will just lead down the midway to the left, and then we will connect up and go straight. We are now back in the center of Frontier Town, just next to the entrance to Maverick. You can see the hill of Mine Ride up ahead, just for reference. To the left is the restrooms, first aid, a few restaurants including a burrito restaurant, and another Coca-Cola refresh. There are also two shops on the left, known as the Cedar Creek Mining Company and Trading Post. Right here is another basketball game and another restaurant which serves burgers and fries called Stockade Refreshments.
To the left is a quick relaxation area with swinging benches called the Shady Hollow. This is right before crossing the railroad tracks and getting into another section of the park known as Gemini Midway. Right here is another upcharge attraction called Slingshot, which is right next to the fast lane entrance, regular entrance, and exit to the racing hybrid coaster called Gemini, which opened here in 1978. To the right here is a corn dog and fresh cut fry place, and another Coca Cola refresh station. We are now coming up on another split path. We'll head down straight later, but first we are going through Camp Snoopy, which is the park's biggest kitty section. We'll come across two more kitty sections later. To the left is the Twin Arrow Acres. And to the right is a small mini whip ride known as Peanuts 500. Opposite Peanuts 500 is another store for Snoopy. And up ahead you can see the biggest kitty coaster in the park of two, Woodstock Express, which is a Vacoma Junior coaster that opened at the park in 1999. To the left is actually another kitty coaster, Wilderness Run, which opened in 1979, formerly known as Junior Gemini. That's the smaller version. Here is a small Tilt-A-Whirl ride, known as Linus's Beetlebugs. I'm not going to bother naming all these smaller kitty rides, but there is a junior drop tower, a bus ride, and some mini swing rides here. These are the Camp Snoopy restrooms. And right underneath Dragster at the end of Camp Snoopy is the newest ride in the park, Snake River Expedition, a boat ride that opened in 2021. We now cut back earlier on the second to last cut in the video, right next to the entrance to Camp Snoopy. So this is that straight section that we skipped out on earlier. This will also connect up back where Snake River Expedition was later. Right here is Pipe Scream, a surfboard type ride. Just across from Pipe Scream is Lake Erie Eagles, which are a flying scooters ride. This spinning flat ride is called Monster. Across from Monster is a Coca-Cola refresh, a yogurt place, and a Snoopy shop. This connects up right back to the old Camp Snoopy path. Right down that narrow path to the right is where Snake River Expedition, which we saw earlier, is located. Across from Snake River Expedition is Backbeat Q, a newer restaurant that replaced Witch's Wheel and is a barbecue restaurant. Down that path to the left is the third entrance of the park. That is the resort entrance and that connects down to the water park and hotel breakers. We'll also get to that big red coaster, Magnum, in just a minute. The exit and photos are down there. Right here is another guessing game, a pretzel place, and the characters. Right next to this pretzel place is the entrance fast lane for Magnum. Right here is the entrance to the world's first hyper coaster, Magnum XL200. Directly next to Magnum is more restrooms. That little building down there is the Dragster Hydraulics area. That's all the parts that runs Dragster. Right here, down this little path, is the entrance to the world's first Stratocoaster, Top Thrill Dragster, opened here in 2003. On the back side of those grandstands, which are used to watch Dragster launch, is another Coca-Cola refresh station. This blue coaster you see is one of the first ever looping roller coasters and the first to have three inversions. It's Corkscrew. The entrance is just behind those stairs. Oh 
right here is Super Himalaya, a typical Himalaya spinny ride. Right here is the entrance to Power Tower, the drop tower and shot tower in the park. Just across the path is the Top Thrill Dragster station and exit area. Dragster's main gift shop is located just off frame. This is arguably one of the most iconic sections of the park. Here we have Iron Dragon's finale and Corkscrew's double corkscrews right over the midway. Right next to these restrooms is the Matterhorn, a typical spinny Matterhorn type ride. Right next to Matterhorn is Scrambler, a typical Scrambler type ride. And right next to Scrambler is the other side of the Skyride station, which has an icy machine and Coca-Cola machine. We are now back on the main midway. We are going to the left here, past the CP juice station. We will go back down the main midway later in order to see that section. Right just past the CP juice stand is where the Cedar Point dorms are. This is also where Auntie Anne's another pretzel place is. On the back side of this Auntie Anne's restaurant is a custom t-shirt designer. You may notice this open door. That open door leads to the Bogota gift shop. This is actually the back side of the gift shop. The front of it is on the main midway, which again we will get to later. We are now heading into the second of three kitty areas. Down that long path leads to one of the tallest rides in the park, Windseeker, which is a standard Starflyer Windseeker type ride. Just down there is Melt, which is a sit-down restaurant, and right past Windseeker is the entrance to the beach. We are not going down that way, but that path connects as an L, which we'll see in just a minute. Welcome to Planet Snoopy, this is just another kitty section. Just to this left down the split, you can see Windseeker in the other entrance. Also down there is a restaurant called The Roost, which sells fried chicken. Just straight ahead is Tiki Twirl, a ride very similar to Scrambler, and also the Giant Wheel, which is just a typical Ferris wheel. This used to be the entrance to Wicked Twister, but unfortunately this ride is closed forever now. This is the back side of the giant wheel. The entrance is on the front side, which is just down the path next to Tiki Twirl. This is the entrance to Gatekeeper. The first coaster you see, but the last one we're hitting on the tour. This is of course the coaster that flies over the front gate. Down past that shaded area is the exit and shop for Gatekeeper and also a small food court with a yogurt place, restrooms, Coca-Cola Freestyle, and some pizza. We are going to go straight in a minute, but we are quickly turning to the right to see Max Air's entrance. Max Air is the typical pendulum ride. This small path leads back down towards Tiki Twirl in that Planet Snoopy area. To the right is a small spinny ride called Troika, which is also very similar to Scrambler. Also down here is the Dodgems ride. Down this path that leads back to the main midway, you can see Raptor and the Sky Ride in the distance, is where most of the games are. There are some games turning to the left on the main midway, but this is where most of the prizes can be won. Over here is Kitty Kingdom, the smallest kitty section in rides and in size. The rides here are very small spinny rides that feel like a fair ride. Also over here is the Lost and Found. We are now back on the main midway, which means we are going to cut back down to Scrambler to show this section of the park. You may be confused as to where we are, but we are right next to Valraven's Sidewinder and just across the path from Scrambler. We are just on the other side of the main midway. Right there you can see Pagoda, which we saw the back side of that place before. 
We are just hitting this middle section of the main midway because we skipped it both times to hit the marina midway and lakeside midway just a bit earlier. Across the path there, you can see the sweet shop and Snoopy Boutique, which is where you can buy all your candy and Snoopy merch. Right here is the Cadillac Cars, which is another antique cars ride, this time in the front of the park. Right next to the subway is a, another carousel, but this time is a racing carousel and moves a lot quicker. Here you can see this big castle-like structure, which is now an arcade. On the upstairs is the ballroom. Just up ahead, underneath Raptor, is a chicken place called the Corral. Just past the Bricks, Kitty Kingdom, and a sit-down restaurant called Johnny Rockets is more games that leads back to the main gate of the park. You can see Gatekeeper up there towering over the entrance. Right here is everyone's favorite restaurant, the Mac Shack, a macaroni and cheese place that opened back in 2020. Just next to Starbucks Coffee and the CP Shop in the Skyride Station is Toff's Ice Cream, a great ice cream place with the cow mascot. The main Cedar Point Shop and the first you stumble across is Point Plaza, right next to the Grand Carousel. Just behind Point Plaza is the last ride on our tour, Ocean Motion, which is a typical pirate ship ride. Right next to Ocean Motion is the main bathrooms and the fast lane shop. And that, of course, leads straight into the park exit. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more tours, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Comment if this helped you in any way when you visit Cedar Point, and have a great rest of your day.